Hey guys, and welcome back to another Lost Bits video right here on Tetrabit Gaming, the series where we explore the unused, scrapped, and unseen content in video games. Being the only main series 3D Mario game for the Wii U, it's no surprise this game went on to be the second best-selling game for the console. It's such a fun game that I even tried speedrunning it lately. Are you kidding me? I hate this game! Anyways, yeah, with the Switch port coming out soon, as I'm making this, I thought it'd be a good time to check out some of the unused stuff found left over in this game. Real quick, before getting started though, I'd like to thank Skyforge for sponsoring this video. The action-packed sci-fi MMO is finally coming to the Switch on February 4th, and best of all, it's free. You don't even need a Nintendo Switch online subscription. And those that do decide to purchase one of the extra bundles for the game on the eShop can get themselves a nice little head start and start the game two days before its official release. So if you'd like to check it out and defend a world under attack using a variety of different class types and items, be sure to check out Skyforge using my link down in the description. Anyways, with all of that said, go, uh, get your cat suits, I guess? It's time to find some lost bits. Alright, so first let's talk about some pre-release things that were altered or removed from the final game. Unfortunately, currently there aren't any publicly available prototypes for this game or anything like that, but thankfully we can get a glimpse into earlier builds of the game via the demo build that was shown off at E3 of 2013. There are quite a few changes seen in this build. It's mostly more minor stuff like not getting points from certain coins like from the rings here, and also some trees were changed. But there were also more major changes, such as in the demo, touching the top of the goal poles would also give the player a 1-up in addition to points, rather than only giving the player points like in the final. Also, unlike in the final, where if you touch the top, the flag turns a gold color, in this demo, the flag color doesn't change. In the interest of time, I won't be going over all of these differences, but if you're interested, a link to the Mario Wiki will be in the description where you can read up on the rest. Anyways, one of the more major changes here are where levels were planned to appear in the game. For example, shown as World 2-1 in this build, this stage was eventually moved to 2-4. 1-5 became 1-4, 4-2 became 6-1, 4 boss became 3-B, and 6-3 became 6-6 in the final. Now it's unclear when exactly this pre-release version was built, but considering E3 2013 was only a few months away from the game's November release that same year, it's interesting that these levels were shuffled around that close to release. The overworld map isn't seen between these levels in this build, as there's only this core selection screen, but I imagine the overworld stage preview things would have had to have been swapped around too. Other notable changes include different light panels seen in the bonus room in World 2-4, some green star locations were changed, the boost pad sound was different with a pew sound, rather than as heard in the final. The stamps also weren't implemented here yet, and Plessy didn't wave goodbye to the player. Now this is sad. Lastly, the icon for Toad seen in the Captain Toad stages was different in earlier builds. In the initial reveal trailer for the game, although Captain Toad is the playable character, instead of Captain Toad's icon in the top left, a standard Toad was seen instead. It's unclear if this was just Captain Toad without his adventuring getup, or if at one point the plan was just to play as a regular Toad. I remember some people saying this was just a repurposed icon for the regular playable Toad character before he was changed into a blue Toad, but who knows. Personally, I have a theory that these stages were originally supposed to use regular Toads, but then the developers decided to implement Captain Toad from Super Mario Galaxy to give the character more exposure, and who knows, maybe even give him a full release or something. Now before moving on, although not present in any builds of the game or anything, apparently Yoshi was once intended to be a playable character in Super Mario 3D World, but was ultimately scrapped. The reasoning for his removal essentially boiled down to the developers thinking that many of Yoshi's attributes, such as flutter jumping and swallowing enemies, was already implemented in other ways, such as Luigi's jump and using a potted piranha plant, respectively. Also, something about not paying taxes? Now moving on, left over in 3D World's files are also numerous text references to unused test levels. Now unlike those we saw back in Yoshi's Woolly World, these unfortunately aren't left in in any sort of playable state, so all we got are the names to speculate what they might have been. Many of these strings contain what appears to be the names of some of the development team, like Yamaguchi, Hosaka, Murata, and more. 
I can only assume these are the names of the developers that were tasked with developing certain stages or game mechanics. For example, we can see test stages referencing warp pipes, auto-scrolling, uh, the platforms that flip when the player jumps, as well as Double Mario, presumably testing the Double Cherry, which, fun fact, was quickly implemented late in the game's development after a developer accidentally added an extra character model into a stage, which the development team saw as a new interesting idea. So yeah, it's cool to see all of these references to these test stages left in the game, but I'd be lying if I said I'm not disappointed that they aren't playable. Fingers crossed that hopefully one day a build of this game surfaces with all of these intact. Now onto some unused object settings. First are how some objects would react to a character with a Mega Mushroom. When obtaining a Mega Mushroom, it seems like pretty much everything in sight can be destroyed, but this isn't the case for some objects. This is for the Palm Trees, which have an unused setting to be destroyed by Mega Mario, as well as the Roulette Blocks. Now I don't think either of these are ever seen anywhere near any of the Mega Mushroom sections in the game, which explains why these don't go used, but I suppose this could mean that there were once other sections where the Mega Mushroom was once implemented where they could be destroyed. Additionally, some warp pipes are also set to specifically not be destroyable with a Mega Mushroom. I think this further supports the idea that there may have been some more Mega Mushroom sections throughout the game that were scrapped. The next unused object settings deals with these here rails under these here platforms. Now by default in the final release, these show up in a striped white and grey variety, but left over and unused are two other color variants, red as well as blue. It's unclear if the different colors would have had any different effects on speed of the platform or anything like that, but my speculation is that maybe the color of the rails would change depending on which way the platform was moving. But as it stands, there's no real way of knowing what the difference was, if any, for sure. Next up, we got some normally unheard audio tracks. The first of these is a track listed as Mario 3 House 2, but it also carries the internal name BGM Test Beat Sync. Based on the word house, it's believed this may have been once a placeholder or test for background music in an item or mystery house. Whatever its once planned use was, it's pretty bumpin', so let's have a quick listen. Then next is the normally unheard section of the jingle for the game heard on the Wii U menu. Now I say normally unheard because by default the game will start automatically after around 8 seconds on this screen, leaving the rest of this track cut out. That said though, the workaround to actually hear the entire track involves just removing the disc while the banner is still up. So not technically unused, it's just I'm sure most people didn't end up hearing the full track. So here you go, here's a sample of what you've probably been missing. And last up for this video, we got some unused graphics left over in the game. First is this hand icon that's looking kinda dumb with its finger and its thumb in the shape of an L that's stored amongst the textures for the other player icons in the game that are used in the top left of the screen. It's speculated that at one point, a hand could have been a fifth player who would use the gamepad exclusively to help other players by tapping enemies, objects, etc. This would have been similar to how it's done in New Super Mario Bros. U. But unfortunately, it looks like once again, Master Hand didn't get to be a playable character. Next up is yet another unused character icon, this time an orange-colored Mario that looks like it could be someone's Mario OC, like SMG69 or something. Additionally, this icon is also associated with a scrapped orange S logo. The intended use for these isn't clear, but it's not believed to have been anything like a scrapped playable character. Instead, based on the S, it's thought to have been a scrapped Super Guide feature as also seen in New Super Mario Bros. U, where Luigi shows the player how to complete a certain level. So I guess maybe this orange-colored Mario was once planned to do the same in this game. And lastly, there's also this unused placeholder texture listed as Shadow Text, featuring some Japanese writing. Unsurprisingly, the text here just translates to Shadow. So, putting two and two together, this is very likely a placeholder texture for Shadows. Go figure. I'm super excited to check out the Switch port of this game, as well as the upcoming Bowser's Fury. 
Of course, if either one of those have enough scrapped stuff to talk about, I'll be sure to cover it. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to slap a like down below to help boost it in YouTube's algorithm. I'd really appreciate it. But as always, guys, thank you all so much for tuning in, and I will see you in a bit.